Get ready. It's gonna be a very, very intense journey. Begin. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Frame Skip Podcast. This is episode number 52. Thank you so much for joining us. I am one of your hosts, Seth Slakehouse, alongside the pride of Maine himself, George Loftus. I wouldn't go that far, but thank you very much regardless, or since I'm in Maine. <laughs> the pride irreg- of Maine. Irregardlessly, because we're in Maine, and that's a word here and here alone. If you could give me like a cardinal sector of where you're at in Maine, what would it be? Uh, I would say Acadia National Park. That is like probably the biggest landmark near me. You're is not. That, you're not. Is that what you meant by cardinal got, sector? Got like a sector. Are you in like northern Maine? No, you can't. Oh, it's too okay, cool. cardinal. Se- Maine. Uh, it's specifically called Down East Maine because the coastline goes. It's at like a forty-five degree angle going east, but like you're technically further okay. down the coast, but you're more north, and so like I'm in the middle of the coast. Of uh, it's like coastal central Maine, I guess is like what I'd call it. Central coastal. The pride Maine. of central Maine, George <laughs> Loft. <laughs> How are you That's from? How, how far are you from Banger? I'm an hour south of Banger. Okay, is which is cool. It? I always the, pronounce it Bangor. I pronounce it Bangor as well, but everyone around me has a Maine accent, and they pronounce it Banger. Friggin' oh, Bangor, Maine. Yeah, sorry. Oh uh, God. Okay, awesome. Bang. I'll Venmo you a couple of bucks for that. Sorry, <laughs> Banger, bud. It's, it's, it's hard, it's hard to do Maine accent without oh. just cursing like a sailor. Um, hand yeah. in hand. I have a couple guys actually from. Um, a paper mill that shut down in Maine that transferred network with us. And they have oh. super heavy Maine accents. And one of them says, bud and whatnot. I wonder if they're, Oh, I wonder All if they're time. from friggin' Rumford, bud. Yeah. Rumford. I don't, I don't know. Is it still cold? Like what's your temperature? It was 60 degrees today, but I saw in the news that they're expecting snow on Friday. So oh, I don't, <laughs> I don't, so I don't know. <laughs> Well, it's always, I think we talked about this before, but it's always called like Fool's Spring, where like that was actually the reason I moved to California back in college, because I was like late for class one day in Vermont. And I was like, oh, screw it. Like, I'm just going to drive up to up to the class for once, not walk like the three quarters of a mile uphill. And I go outside and there's just like five inches of snow on my car, like in the mid, like early May, late April. And I'm just like, well, this is dumb. I don't want to do this for a a while. So then I moved to uh, California for like almost 10 years. I completely understand. We get the same thing in, in Pennsylvania. I'll be at not as much snow, but we get frost really bad because of the temperatures warming and dropping so much. So like it could rain at like, you know, 10 PM and then the temperatures will drop so far at night that the rain all freezes. So you wake, you, you wake up and you have to scrape off your car in the morning because everything's frozen and then it'll warm back up to 65 degrees during the day. So in, you know, beginning of spring on your front steps, it feels like you're ice skating and like you could die at any second, you know, just from like one slip. Yeah. yeah it's the best. It's exactly how I want to live my life. It's incredible. Those are the best videos though. People falling down their steps because they just slipped in their boom, 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 boom. Man, that or the ones where people are about to like take a dive into water that they have no idea is frozen because it like froze so perfectly, <laughs> you know, like those where like someone does a cannonball into their jacuzzi and their jacuzzi is just like completely oh, yeah. frozen solid. Those ones are great. And also the pride of what what cardinal sector of Texas are you from, Coach? West Texas. The pride west of West Texas. The coach Kyle Newman. I like West Texas. That that rolls off the tongue. Nice, bud. Yeah, yes. man, I like that. I had some old El Paso uh, taco shells this past weekend, so thank you for That's that. That's funny, huh? I remember those commercials living in San Diego. So, but yeah. But no, man, I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing great, man. Uh, what, kind of, real quick, real quick, what kind of headphones do you have? Are you sporting uh, right now? I don't now? remember. I don't remember. Are they, they the are... ROG or the RIG? Xerbia. Here's okay. my thing. I, I have a really big conspiracy about audio. And I know I'm in the minority here. I know a lot of people don't believe me. I think most audio equipment is like extremely overpriced once you get above like the $25, $30 range. And then you're mostly paying for like name brands. So like I buy, I bought these. Uh, noise canceling headphones off of Amazon. I think they're like 30 bucks. And I just rock them. I don't worry about getting like um, Bose or like Turtle Beaches or anything like that. Your theory on headsets is my theory on wine and liquor. I completely yep. agree. <laughs> oh, I love yeah. $10 wine. Give me, I'll, I'll buy 10, 10, I'll buy a $10 bottle of wine of red wine any day, every day. Oh, I'm drinking a $18 box of wine right now. It is incredible. Love it. So much easier to carry home than a bottle. 
So, like, you guys are familiar with my old podcast, Two Beers and a Whiskey, correct? Yes. Where we yes. drank and tell stories and whatnot. So, one time, Watson thought it would be a good idea to bring this whiskey from 1960 and had us drink it. We all we were all excited. We thought it was going to be a great thing. I drank it. It was the worst whiskey I have ever had. It made me super sick. I threw up after the show and laid in on the bathroom floor for, like, 20 minutes. And I'm pretty sure I had alcohol poisoning. Like, I was down man and i only had like one glass and i, I had a really high tolerance of alcohol at the time because i was drinking all the time and uh man i that i am so much in agreement that like uh, there's like obviously some better kinds of whiskey but i think like man once you hit like 50 bucks for a bottle it, it really doesn't matter because like yeah. you don't want like the trash like plastic bottle whiskey that stuff will yeah i've had i've had clan mcgregor scotch um it's fine. Like after like the third or fourth, you can't really taste the difference because like you can't yeah, taste anything because it's basically just like ethanol. But uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Like I won't go more than like 50, 60 bucks for like a bottle of Laphroaig. I think Laphroaig is like the, the most delicious liquid on the planet. But then I will never buy a $200 bottle of whiskey. I still rock like Skull Candy headphones from Walmart, like the 20 bucks, $20 ones. I don't get super expensive headphones or anything like that. I just don't think I, th- I my theory is that they are almost all the same. And I, especially the um, beats beats by Dr. Dre, or they actually put extra metal in the, in the headphones to make them feel heavier so that you don't feel like you're getting ripped off. I was kind of like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> I but, bought the, yeah. the 3d wireless headset for PlayStation five. Mm-hmm. And that was like a hundred bucks. And I hadn't bought a headset since like PlayStation three. And I bought it just so it'd be like, okay, I'm buying this strictly for convenience because this was made for the PlayStation five. It will connect easily to the PlayStation five. That's really all I'm looking for is something that works incredibly simply out of the box, but I would never, Mm -hmm. my partner has like these really nice, like Bose, like noise canceling headphones. And like, those are great because they have a audio Mm -hmm. jack, but like the Bluetooth themselves is just such a pain in the ass to use that I just like, and, and they were expensive, but like, you know, they were going on a whole bunch of trips and wanted like noise canceling headsets. So like, I, I couldn't blame them for, for wanting that, but it's just like, it's such a pain in the ass to like make work for anything except like your iPhone. Do you guys rock the uh, wireless earbuds at all for like your phone and music and stuff? Mm-hmm. I do see. I don't, I don't like them because the only ones I ever liked were the ones that were connected with a wire that you could, I could mm-hmm. drop drape around my neck. I don't. Right. I have two of like the little pod earbuds that are just pretty much the earbud that I, you can stick in. I don't like them because I constantly feel like when they're gonna fall out, and when they if they fall out and I'm running or working out or something, there's a good chance like, I'm gonna step it or I'm gonna lose it. I, I don't know. I, it, well, I just I'm not a fan. I always wear the, the wired ones anyway. Right. I have wireless, but I have some Bose wireless that have that connect behind right the yeah the wire that you can clip to your. Uh, to your shirt. So if I go cycling and I'm on bliss where there's no cars, I'll wear those because I know if they fall out, the clip is still going to stay on my Jersey. Now I have the, um, the noise cancellation, uh, AirPods, right. And, but I don't use those outside of the house. So yeah, it's, I don't it's, walk it's around. I don't walk around. Yeah. Out, yeah. I don't walk around town. Like you see everybody with their head, you know, but you know, if I always it was funny because you want to hear I was, a funny story that relates to that, Coach. Yes. So, is the reason you don't walk around town because you can't hear and you feel unsafe? No. Oh, okay. Well, I thought that's oh. what you were going for. Anyway, no. Oh, that, so, that's what. That's why I didn't do it. Yeah. Okay. So, sorry. I'll let you finish your story. Okay. Now, I, I feel like I, for flow's sake, I gotta continue my story. I used to just throw in when I was younger the headphones and my iPod from you know eighth grade. Good old and I would days. go for I would go for hikes up this mountain after school is when I was training for karate, and uh, I would bring my dog with me. We'd go for walks because I grew up on forty five acres of land in the middle of the mountains, in the middle of nowhere. Right. So my dad is was always like, "Hey, stop doing that. Stop wearing headphones and blasting music at the top at, at the max volume because." You can't hear what's going on around you. What if there's like a mountain lion or a mama bear or something? And I was like, dad, 
I've lived here for 15 years. I was 15 years old probably at the time. I was like, <laughs> I've never had any sort of problems. I've never been in any danger. All right. And I've got my dog, Taz. And he was alive at the time with me. And I was like, I'll be fine. So I'm sure I did it for months and months, maybe even years later. Sure enough, one day, uh, uh, effing bear pops out in front of me. Are you serious? Yes. And I was, I shit my pants and I, I ran and I never wore headphones in the forest again. Now, black bears, northeastern black bears, naturally big teddy bears. They're, they are more scared of humans unless they're mama bears. Still horrifying to see like a oh, 600 yeah. pound beast pop up in front of you that you didn't hear coming because you had your headphones in. Never wore them again. Took my dad's advice. I should have learned when I was 16 years old to just take my dad's advice and stop arguing with him about literally anything. Did a but bear I, is still a did bear? You? <laughs> like I don't care if it's you know if it's got its like hand in like a beehive and it's like steak, taking sandwiches out of a picnic basket. If it's wearing yeah. a tie and like a beret, I don't care. It's still a bear necessities. Yeah, it's still a freaking bear, man. Like <laughs> now, famously. As I've stated publicly many times before, I believe in my current state, I could fight a northeastern black bear and win. Grizzly bear? No. Give me a polar bear? No. No, uh, no those two, no. None you of give us me can. a northeastern black bear, bud, I am taking its back and I'm choking it out immediately. See, All here's right? the deal. That, like, polar bears, maybe, because I know that their environment is not in the best of conditions right now. And uh, a lot of oh, them so are starve them out is what you're playing. Yeah, I'm just saying they're probably <laughs> malnourished, but also because of that, they're probably a little desperate and they, they got like their their backs against the wall. So make, maybe they'll fight tougher. I don't know. But also, I just I think there's I'm not, not going to be I'm as not much taking out a polar bear. Not going to be as much pop in its swing is all I'm saying. I'm not taking out a polar bear. I'm not taking out a grizzly bear. I think I have a real good chance against North Northeastern black bear. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, it's going right. great for me. You know, I like <laughs> 12 minutes in. We're, I'm doing great. Um, how are you doing, coach? Are you doing well over there in El Paso? Just really busy um, as usual. Like I, I had like 10 hours planned of gaming this weekend and I got mm-hmm. zero minutes in. So it's just the state exam has started for English. We're in like three, three weeks. Um, Saturdays, we're going to be working military. They're trying to get everybody um, move in because there's a possible deployment. So there's just, it's just like really crazy right now. So it's stressed. Like every time about this year, I get super stressed. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't sleep much. So like today I felt it when I got to work, like, I wasn't hyperventilating, but I felt like I could, like I was on the verge. So I had to just take, take a break real quick, take a deep breath, rest for a minute, and then go on with the lesson, right? Just because there's a lot of things in my mind right now, right? Sure. Yeah. So, dude. yeah. I feel like I'm failing my unit, which, you know, they want a hundred percent, uh, like, okay, they, they act as if, if you are, they call it TPU, but basically if you're the, the monthly guy, right? Because they do have full timers there. They expect like all this work during the week. And they know that I can't. I mean, like we got new leadership, so they don't know. The ones before understood, so it was good, right? So yeah, it's been it's been a little crazy, but how many years do you have left in the military before you well retired? it's usually you know, twenty or thirty, right? Twenty, right. So I have two and a half years, October of 2003, I will be at 20. Oh, So yeah. And that would be perfect because if I decide to go into administration, then I don't have to worry about leaving and I could just focus on, you know, going like 10 hard years as an administrator, as an AP assistant principal, and then, uh, you know, call it a day, you know, at 60, 61 or whatever. Well, cause if, I, if I, I remember correctly, because I just talked about this with my buddy who's a, a ranger, you guys get pretty good retirement if you stay the full 20, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. We'll get, I'll get a check for the rest of my life. Yeah, that's what I thought. Like, like right. the military retirement at 20 years is pretty good. Not only that, but you'll have medical benefits. That's the big thing. Yeah. So I'll have two retirements from teaching and the military, and then I'll have um, Social Security, right? So, nice. yeah. So if I wanted to retire, 
Like I turn, I turn 50 next month. So if I wanted to retire at 60 in 10 years, I'll be able to do that. You nice. know, that'd, that'd be awesome, man. Yeah. That's pretty great. Yeah. Coach, so we'll see. Uh, <clears throat> you mentioned something about like almost like hyperventilating. And I just, I'm curious just from the outside. Um, I don't know. Being in the military seems like an incredibly stressful situation and it is very much life or death. Do they give you like any kind of training for like actually dealing with like anxiety attacks, panic attacks, stuff like that? Like, is that something you've been trained to deal with or is it like only when it comes up, then do you sort of like get exposed? The only time I get like this, right. The only time I get like this is when I'm doing both right now. Right. So usually it happens right before deployment and I'm not scared to deploy. It's just, I have a lot going on. Right. Sure. Cause right now I'm not just a, I'm not just teaching. I'm uh, the math department head, right. The chairperson. So I got those responsibilities. I got platoon sergeant responsibilities. And uh, so that is the, it's the overload. Right. Sure, but yeah. I, when I deploy, I sleep better. I could get those 10, 12 hour uh, sleep sessions in. I'm only doing one job. So everything goes like a lot smoother, right? Gotcha. So I don't, I don't sense. get those anxiety and it was just minor. It was really minor today, but it's just because I'm juggling stuff right now. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, well, I hope things work out a little better for you soon, buddy. Oh, well, they will. I mean, like, it's okay. I mean, like I'm not walking around the day, like going, Oh, life sucks. Cause I'm thankful yeah. to be working. It's just that sometimes it, if you, when you step back and you think about it, instead of just doing, it could seem a little overwhelming. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I just felt overwhelmed this morning. All right, George, what about you? What you been playing lately, man? What you been doing? Um, honestly, I've had a, <clears throat> I've had an incredibly painful knot in my neck for the past couple of days. So I've been Oof. not doing great. Speaking of knots, uh, hey. but besides that, for games, man, I uh. We, I know we've been talking about it a lot, and it's probably seemed like beating a dead horse at this point, talking about the PlayStation Network and the changes that are clearly coming to PlayStation's ecosystem. But because of that, I just, I've just i been spending a lot of time with my PSP lately, and I started playing Final Fantasy III for the first time. And this is like the original Final Fantasy III, like actual Final Fantasy III, not six that was rebranded as three in the States on Super Nintendo. And that game is incredible. It's an interesting choice. Why three? It was $10 on the PlayStation Network, <laughs> mostly. And so I grabbed it there, and I'd never touched it before. The only Final Fantasy games I've really played are 10, 5, and 15. And I've, I really liked 5. I played all of 5 and really enjoyed it. And I heard wow. 3. I heard that 3. Is a, that is a list. Yeah, and I know it's like a weird one, but I just I couldn't get into 4 when I played it on DS. I couldn't get into 8 very much on PlayStation when I tried. I've tried... Uh, Final Fantasy 7, also on my PSP, couldn't get into it, but for whatever reason, I was like, eh, screw it, I just want to check this out, and man, Final Fantasy 3 is fantastic. Uh, the story is, like, a little bit slow, but I just love being in the world so much, and it's nice to get back to, like, the job system, and sort of figuring out the best, like, actual alignment and arrangement of your your party, and it's just been a lot of fun, man. Um, Coach and I had a date to both play No More Heroes this weekend. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's a 10 hour game. I could knock that out this weekend. I played like an hour and a half, two hours of it. So I'm going to withhold judgment on that until Coach can can get some time and maybe I'll I'll finish it in the coming weeks. Um, so that was fun. But yeah, mostly PSP. No mostly. More Heroes is my favorite game on Wii. Oh, yeah, man. It, it's great. I uh, I haven't touched it since college and I don't think I finished it then, which is why I was really excited to revisit it. Um, but then, yeah, you know, life just sort of like steps in, punches you in the face, takes your lunch money and uh, skedaddles, unfortunately. <laughs> Does the Switch version have the motion controls? Because that game was built for the motion controls. And I know they re- uh, remastered or remade it for the PS3. But if it's just using the, the sticks, I think I would just rather play the Wii version. I never, I never grabbed the Switch version. I was playing my Wii version on my Wii U. You know the the worst case of motion controls, I think, and force motion controls, I think, that are out there is let's go Pikachu and Eevee with the Switch. 
because they do not allow you to play the game normally. You have to, they, they don't allow you to play it with a controller, that you have to use a single Joy-Con to play with it. What is that? That is it's the Joy-Con. That is a single Joy-Con. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, it was you super, use the, super the, frustrating. The yeah. yeah. See, for me, I enjoyed it, though. I like that part about it. Yeah, I mean, but I want to. I, I don't want to play a game with one hand. Right, I know. <laughs> I want to hold something, you know. But uh, Sword and Shield, you have to use a controller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For Speaking me, of Sword and Shield, I've been playing a lot with that. For me, it was frustrating yeah. with with Let's Go, just because it's like I couldn't get comfortable on the couch. Like all I wanted to do was just lean back and play a Pokemon game. But then as soon as you got into like catching, which there's just so many Pokemon all the time for you to catch, I would have to like sit up. I'd have to position myself. I'd have to like straighten out my wrist and like do all this stuff. And that was why I ultimately just played that game handheld, just because it was so annoying, like readjusting my posture for that game. How do you play it handheld, by the way? Do you have to like move the whole switch like no, this? No, it's, it's no, no. I think it's the uh, the thumbsticks or something like that. It's not even. No, it's gyro for like aiming the pokeballs or whatever, and then you just like pull one of the triggers. I think to to throw a pokeball. Oh, that sounds a lot more convenient. Why can't they just let you do that with a controller on the TV? I don't know. You'd think they would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's super weird. Yeah, I think I want to go back and play. Let's go, Evie, because my my girlfriend pretty much lives with me now, and we got her switch set up to the TV in the living room and we've been playing that a lot. And um, we started playing Let's Go Eevee together. And I just, the thing is, man, is that game is so aimed towards children. And I understand what they were going for. I think it's a great idea to get kids into, into Pokemon, although I don't really agree with making it mind-numbingly easy because we didn't have that when we were kids, but whatever. Um, and your partner Pokemon gets so strong so fast that it's almost not even fun because you can just decimate everyone in that game pretty much with one shot with your partner Pokemon. So I think my plan, I'm going to start a new game and I'm just not going to use it. I'll make not it six. You're not going to use what? Like the, your starter Pokemon, your partner Pokemon. Oh, okay. Well, that one's weird just because it's like Pikachu. I get, cause he's got like special attacks, you know, like, he, I think he learns Iron Tail, or he learns like some kind of fighting, like double punch or something, and that helps you against like the first gym, like that helps you against Brock. And then like you know, it's Pikachu. Mm-hmm. He's gonna steamroll Misty in Cerulean City, and then like I don't know, Electric's really good against like the Ice types and the the Dragon types, like in the Elite Four. Like once you get there, Eevee is a normal type Pokemon, and I'm pretty sure you can't evolve it right in the game. No, no, nope, you could not evolve it. Not her, but if you and this is where I learned. Like I didn't know anything. L- Let's go. Eevee was my first Pokemon game that I actually beat. Oh, congrats! Right. Yeah. So, right. So while I was playing it, no, not that one. When I was playing uh, Sword, I learned about evolving Eevee. How Eevee goes into those, <laughs> and and I just like I lost control. I was like, what the heck? It was, man. I'm like, no way. And that's all I cared about in the game is like evolving them and they're in my mains. And I just went through and destroyed that game, right? Man, yeah, I dude. I don't, I don't mean to sound condescending. It's freaking adorable, man. That is so cute. It's so funny, <laughs> yeah. Because like yeah. everyone loves it. Because the Pokemon company right now is trying to make Eevee pretty much like the second mascot of Pokemon, they're really pushing Eevee, which I think is cool because Eevee is pretty cool. Yeah. To be honest, I like, I like the play on the name Eevee evolution and it's put, it's, it's other forms are called the Eevee Lucians, which I think are pretty neat. But so my question now is like, I know that, uh, is, is it diamond and pearl that's getting remade right now? Yeah. It looks okay. Terrible. So do I like, where do I go next? Like, do I play, fire red or leaf green or do i jump into heart gold soul silver you know or like what x or y like i'm I'm trying to debate on i would say that all depends on the tolerance you have for the old graphics yeah uh fire red and leaf green are basically just like super nintendo style remakes of red and blue which is basically what you just did with let's go pikachu so i don't know if i'd go back to that and I'm saying that as someone who like occasionally will play like a, a ROM hack of fire red, you know, I'm like, okay, this is like yeah. a fun thing to yes. do, like to grind when I'm like watching a basketball game. I don't really care about, but besides that, um, it's not like I'm like loving it to, to go back there. 
I think Heart Gold and Soul Silver are not just the best remakes, but they're the best remakes of the best games. I'm excited to revisit yeah, Diamond I and agree. Pearl just because those games I didn't like, but I loved Platinum, which was like the the third mm-hmm. and like final. I do have Platinum. Platinum, I think, is great. Platinum is really good. And also, but again, this this all depends on your how sensitive you are to the old graphics because X and Y were the first ones to use the new graphics in right. the games, coach. Yeah, I so, remember when that came out. Mm. That was sweet. X and Y yeah. are sweet. X and Y are great. Really, you liked it. Yeah, and then Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire; those were remade. Those are great too. Is that the one where the reviewer put uh, too much water? Is that, that what is, that, that is? Yeah, that was that was Callie Plaguey over at uh, formerly GameSpot. Now she's over at Nintendo. What pisses me off most about that is one. Okay, well, one I I don't know her, but like we've been drunk in the same bar at the same time several times because we both lived in San Francisco and had like a lot of overlapping friends. She told me that like she didn't mm-hmm. choose that to to go in. Like the person who was like actually like doing the layout for the article was the one who chose that. Two, she's right. right. South Sapphire had way too much water. Like, and when she says too much water, it was just like an overdependence on water based mechanics, like the HMs, like waterfall and surf and and dive and all that stuff. Oh, that's what me and me and Austin said when that whole thing was happening. Was that like that's a legitimate complaint? Yeah. If there's too much water typing in the game. You know, and it's like, yeah, no, she, she was, got, she got memed on, but she was a hundred percent right. And like, you know, she's talked about it. It's just like, I did this 10 years ago, eight years ago, whenever the game came out, just like, and it still comes up all the time. Like I can't escape this. It sucks. And so like, out of respect to her, like, try, try not to bring it up, but also like, she didn't even choose that right. to be like the pull quote in the review. And she was on top of it. Uh, she wrote that in the review, and like that was the quote that was pulled. And she's a hundred and ten percent right. Like there's just way too much water in that game, especially like. Oh, no, it's just like later in Alpha Sapphire, it sucks. <laughs> like, there's just so much surfing you have to do. Where she's at, I mean, she's got to meet some incredibly, you know, probably insane people in the gaming industry. She, like, you know, all of them out there that live in San Francisco, they got to do a lot of cool stuff. So I want to box every single one of them. Greg? Uh, all of them. I would like to wrestle Greg, like, like get in a ring and let's let's do some lucha, but let's make it hurt. Here's here's what I can say about. I know we talked about this the last time I was on the podcast. Here's what I can say about the toughness of Greg Miller. That I thought about after we had that conversation. Back in the day, Greg and Colin had a conversation with Colin about who would win in a fight, and Colin said he would absolutely smash Greg. And Greg did not mm-hmm. seem to have a reasonable answer. He was like, and Greg was like, okay, but I would at least give you a challenge. And like, here's the thing. I'm so sure I could beat up Colin Moriarty. That oh, not, I'm so much more sure I could beat up Greg Miller. And I know, George, you don't agree. I just think Greg Miller doesn't stand a chance. He's got an awkward shaped body. He looks off balance. I'm going to sweep his legs. It's just, and I'm going to, you know, when you see a short, nose. you know, when you see like a short guy in the NBA and like everyone just like <laughs> towers above him. It's like, well, they tower yeah. above them because those guys are seven foot ten or whatever. They're seven foot eight. <laughs> and that guy looks puny, but he's actually six foot four. I've I've stood next to Greg Miller. I've gotten drunk with Greg Miller. He's a big dude. Like he's just he's someone I wouldn't want to tussle with. And also, like, he's just got reach. Like he's got a big wingspan. He's been studying the art of wrestling his entire life. I don't know. I feel like that dude could not just throw some punches, <laughs> but, but but throw some surprises too. I would not want to be on the receiving end of a of, of Greg Miller hurt. Uh, so, gentlemen, this week I want to talk about. I, w- I want to bring to the table a discussion. If you got promoted to the okay. head of PlayStation tomorrow, All right. what moves are you making to switch the bad PR? Because, like, like I told you guys in the in the Slack chat. They are getting a Mike Tyson combo straight from the 80s right now. That PR department is probably on fire. I have no idea what they're doing. Because uh, Jason Schreier just put out this article five days ago about how Days Gone 2 got canceled. They had this independent team that was working for like five years on unnamed projects. and They didn't know what to do. They were badly managed. And they were making a Last of Us remake. And I, that got, they got, it got pulled from them. And it was supposedly scrapped, and then Naughty Dog, it got sent to Naughty Dog, and by the way, they're making Last of Us 2. 
or not Last of Us Two. They're they're remaking The Last of Us, which I think everyone on the internet seems to be in agreement that does not need remade. Um, and this is on top of the the shutdowns and the rumors, like Coach, you brought up that the rumors that the PS fours might stop working when if the CMOS battery dies in them. Um, you get promoted to PlayStation head tomorrow. What moves are you making, George? You go first. All right. Um. Hmm. I would try to make PlayStation now a, a more competitive service with Game Pass. I think Game Pass is an incredible deal. I just don't care about Xbox nearly as much as I do about PlayStation. And I think the PlayStation Now uh, cloud functionality, even if PlayStation 1 games and PlayStation 2 games only exist on PlayStation Now, I think that's something worth investing in. I would try to do like a... Uh, an emulator to make those games possible because I don't understand how you can release a game console with uh, Astro Bot's Big Adventure, whatever that game was called, uh, like the demo that came on PlayStation 5 that was literally all about celebrating PlayStation's history and then in less than a year shut down, you know, three fifths of PlayStation's history. Like, I, I just don't understand that thought process. And so I think PlayStation thinks that they are in a position to provide incredible experiences to people, but feel like they've forgotten that they have incredible memories for people too. And so like, I know there's been studies about backwards compatibility, uh, backwards compatibility and how people don't, people say they want it, but they don't actually use it that much in practice. I don't think that's up for PlayStation to decide. I think that's up for like the users to decide and, I don't know. There's a reason I don't work at at Sony as like head of PR or like head of uh, you don't know like uh, new new developments, ongoing projects, whatever. But I, I think they need to like celebrate because like they've been in this since 1994, and they're acting like their first big hit was the PlayStation 4 that came out in 2013, and like that's just they're 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 just wrong, you know. Like they're beloved, and they need to celebrate it. Yeah, the reason I'm bringing. The reason I'm bringing this to the table is because I feel like these things happen, these positions happen, because um, I was looking at Jim Ryan a little bit. He doesn't play games. He's not passionate about the industry he's in. And Coach, what is the number one secret to success? Uh, clean as you go. <laughs> It's, it's, it's passion. You gotta have passion for what okay. you do. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, that's our cook's motto in the army: "Clean as you go." No, that's that's what but, I do here. Yeah, yeah. You gotta clean as you go. I Otherwise, try you get to, too, too many dishes I, in the I, sink. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. I get too lazy. I hate doing dishes. Um, Jim Ryan is not passionate about video games, so he can't make the moves. I think that makes sense to gamers because he's like looking at it from a very strict business perspective. And I just think that that is the wrong perspective to make because the reason the PlayStation 4 was so successful is because they appealed to the core gamer. And it's weird to me that less than 10 years later, they have lost that whole philosophy. They're like, because I think this is a very common theme. I'm sorry, George. Or by the way, were you done? Or did you have more moves you wanted to make? No, no, that's, those are like the biggest moves. I mean, obviously, I'd want to green light a, a Vita 2 as well. Um, <laughs> just take advantage of it while you're still in head yeah <laughs> my first day in office a vita 2 green light yeah, it yes please. i'm not gonna be here for very long green light the vita 2 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um but see i think this is a really common theme that i'm noticing in japanese video game development it seems to be a very cultural thing with the japanese is that they seem to have this switch that happens where they're like okay we're doing great. We no longer need to listen to the fan base because this happened with Square Enix famously for a very long time. This has now happened with Sony seemingly twice. Um, and then um, obviously there's like a Konami um, Capcom Capcom. There's famous examples of this where, they, where it seems like in Japanese game development. They, they hit a, a point of hubris almost, I would say. That says where these companies go, we no longer need to listen to the fan base. They do bad for a little bit. Or maybe it's just more of we know what you want more than you know what you want. That's that's a better way of describing it, I think. 
Um, and I, I get that feeling from Sony once again. It feels very much like early PS3 era Sony making moves that no one wants. No one wants a Last of Us remake. So if I was head of PlayStation, got promoted tomorrow, um, I'm looking at my staff and I'm going, all right, where can we improve people that understand this industry from a consumer level and not from a business perspective level? We still need these business people, obviously, to keep the money flow going. But let's inject some more consumer-friendly people like Shuhei Yoshida was uh, until they, they stuck him in a corner of a dark warehouse somewhere. Is he um, the one that Greg would always be on yeah. some video with Greg and Colin? He was the community face, really, of PlayStation. You know, he was the guy that was going uh, and, and talking to the people. And, 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 you know, he was promoting these indie games and he was doing a great job. Him and, and he was sort of the Geo Corsi, Geo Corsi for the Vita did the same thing. You know, he was the face. Well, he was the and head, he was the head of faces. Worldwide Studios. You know, like he was. Yeah. He was in charge of uh, like a really important component of Sony at a very important time for Sony. And like it's I absolutely adore the PlayStation 3. But I adore the PlayStation 3 from like 2010, 2011 on, you know, like they were getting their asses kicked and they deserved it. You know, like they were incredibly arrogant when they released the PlayStation 3. It was kind of a broken system. They weren't thinking about what it should be. They were just thinking like, oh, people are just going to come because look what they did with the PlayStation 2. And it feels like Sony's sort of doing that again with the PlayStation exactly. 5. And like, I really enjoy my PlayStation 5. I don't use it very often because at this point, it's basically just like a super PlayStation 4. And there's just not a lot to enjoy right now. But honestly, like in a lull like this, this is when I'd go back and play older games. And there's just a complete dearth of things besides PlayStation 4 for me to play on my PlayStation 5. Like, that's why I'm playing play like Final Fantasy 3 right now is because like, oh, I never played it. And there's yeah, like I might grab Returnal at the end of the month. We'll see. But until the, like, I don't know, like maybe Resident Evil 8, but I don't really care about Resident Evil that much. So I'm like, eh, yeah, right. Mass Effect probably. And then maybe Baldur's Gate in June. Like there's just not a lot on the horizon for me, which is why I have no problem going back and playing Luminous on my PSP. I have no problem going back and playing Final Fantasy 3 and why I'm probably going to do Tactics Ogre after that, you know, just because it's like, well, nothing else to do. And there's nothing for me to do on my PlayStation five. <laughs> right. So before I move on, I want to just say, you got to stop playing the worst final fantasy games. You got to start playing the good ones. You've gotten almost all the bad ones out of the way. Dude, three is Let's great. Start playing three. four, six. It's fine. It, it's a, it's a fine final fantasy game from someone who hasn't played the big ones yet. You got to start playing four. <laughs> you got to start playing six, seven. Four, all right. Four, nine. Four, we don't talk about eight. Yeah. 14. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll get to 14 eventually. You gotta play 9. You gotta play 12. 12 is good. It's a different. It's two different games blended together. Yeah, man, I grabbed a whole bunch of those. Like, I grabbed like a Type 0 for PlayStation 4. I'm excited to check that out. But, like, honestly, it's just the more I play different Final Fantasy oh. games, the more I like other Final Fantasy games. And so I'm hoping. Type to, 0 is interesting. I'm hoping to burn through 3 because it's only supposed to be like 30 hours and I put like 10 into it. Yeah. I feel like I'm just most mainline Final Fantasy game. games. Most mainline Final Fantasy games until you get to the PS1 are less than 50 hours. And they got to the PS1, and they're like, let's make them as big as possible. <laughs> let's make them four discs, actually. <laughs> and then each disc is going to be 15 hours. Well, that's what's, in, oh, okay. that's what's impressive, though, is like, I don't know, like I started Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and then it, like, oh, 120 hours to complete. And that was like such a turnoff. But like, I don't know, yeah. it's just like, I'm just so new to the Final Fantasy series that like, oh, 80 hours of just like messing around with this, like I could do that. And honestly, half of Final I Fantasy... I would love to hear you update me. Half of Final Fantasy 3 I'm playing again because like, uh, I didn't know I could save in the overworld, but not in towns. And I thought like I had to get to a point in the game where it allowed me to save. And so I just got wiped in a dungeon that I wasn't supposed yes. to be in. So like I lost an hour and a half there and I'm like, well, that sucks. But I was like just drunk enough where I'm like, screw it, I'm doing it again. I'm going to go back and just wipe these dudes. And then I did, and it felt great. And now my party is completely overpowered, and it's exactly where I want to be. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to get that point out of the way before I move on, because I, I, I might tell you that earlier. You got to play the good ones. Okay. But the, the, the next thing I would do is, I, as, as the head of Sony, is um, I would have a state of the union address and be like, listen, what do you guys want from us? 
you know, and and I would kind of because like Sony's one of their biggest problems in the last two three years is that they cut all communication off. You know, they 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 haven't been talking to the people like they used to do that made them that made them the great powerhouse of gaming that they they were. Let me put out a poll, I think, and I'm gonna be like, listen, we're gonna do this poll once a year. And we're going to give the fans the opportunity to pick the next project that we focus on. That pool would have things such as Uncharted 5, you know, Siphon Filter remake, uh, you know, things things that people have been asking for for a long time. PlayStation An All-Stars 2. PlayStation All-Stars yeah. 2. Sure. Put that on the pool. It, 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 that doesn't hurt anything. You know what I'm saying? Asking the people what they want never hurts anybody. I think so, it, I think it does because either do it and it's like they don't know what they're doing. They had to ask people what to do, or they don't do yeah. it and then they're the jerks who don't listen to the people they asked what they should do. <laughs> no, so that, that that's my thing. We're giving you guys the power to choose the next game, the next project we focus on. When you vote this game in, it's being made, confirmed. That is it. That is the green light to go. So if you if you guys vote PlayStation All Stars two, that is the game that we're going to form uh, a team to make. And that's just a, a gift to the community, right? That, that would be one of my big hisses from, you know, as, as the head of Sony, we're going to become a more community driven environment because that's what is so great about PlayStation is that I love the community. That's why like it, this, the, the, this time in PlayStation's life is so rough for me because it's like, God, you know, I have no reason to stick with PlayStation. I have every reason to just play my Switch, my PC, and my Xbox. That's it. You know, the only reason I have to, to play PlayStation games is, is the exclusives, and that, that's a, that's a crappy feeling, man. I, there's, I haven't not had a PlayStation console on release since the PS1. I had the PS2, PS3. Well, I got the PS3 like six months after release, but the, the PS4 got in release. So this is like a, this is like a, a terrible time. So I think by driving a more community-driven PlayStation, you can bring that community back, just like it was at the beginning of the PS4. So, yeah, I put a poll out. I like, okay, what are the most requested features that you guys want? But for real this time. Remember when they used to have that poll every month on the PlayStation blog? Yeah. And never got anywhere? What, what do you guys really want from us? We'll take it seriously. And I think I would probably start calling up companies like Square Enix. Let's work out some exclusivity deals. Sega, let's work out some exclusivity deals. Let's start making smart moves instead of making business moves. I think that's the biggest problem Sony has right now. They're making business moves. Shutting off the PS3, Vita, and PSP store, that's a business move. It's not a community move. No one wants that. No one asks for that. You know, There's no real reason to for it either. It doesn't cost that much money. So. Yeah, and also like the servers are still going to be up for people to download the games. So they're yeah. still running the servers for people to get the games when they want the games but they're cutting off their only access of revenue on that platform. Yes. So like that, that's just, that's confusing to me. All right, coach, what about you? What, what moves are you so, making? The first thing I would do is I would talk to all the big companies or the big developers um, and see what they have down the pipeline. Right. I would specifically talk to Naughty Dog and say, you know what? You guys can do what you want, but Let's stay away from another Last of Us game. Let's stay away from Uncharted. Let's do something new. Let's get something new. If you want to do a shooter, go for it. If you want to go back into something like Jack and Daxter or a little, you know, let's, let's get some new stuff going. And let them know that they don't have to be this huge game that you have to spend three or four years in, you know, because that's what is, I think is hurting them because it looks like right now it's just going to be the big triple A titles. And besides uh, indie games, there's nothing in the middle. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's going to cause breaks like what the, we went through where there's no releases, you know, of their main titles. So I would talk to the big, you know, your big companies that you have with you, right? And to get some games, see what they got going on. And then talk to the middle tier developers. 
and get them together and start planning, start figuring out what, what we want to, what do you want to start making? You know, give them the option. What games do you want us to help you uh, fund and make sure that we get out there? So, yeah, I mean, they should honestly, they should call THQ Nordic and be like, let's work out a couple deals, yeah. right? I mean, THQ Nordic is the second party now. They, or the, it's like or they the own every, everything almost. They have like 150 like. studios now, bud. That's, that's, that's how, as Sony, we call it THQ Nordic and be like, let's, let's cut a couple deals you know well, it's them and also like doesn't 2k have like 100 games in development that are supposed to release like in the next like two and a half three years oh, yeah. like a ridiculous number like yeah, a stupid so, like absurd number yeah and so like coach like that's a great point uh i'm really glad you brought that up i went through my entire transaction history on my playstation 3 console just to see which psp games i had which ps1 classics i had which ones i still wanted to buy and i was reminded of all these like incredible small games that came out and whether they were like, you know, stuff we're going to be talking about 15 years later or not, I think that's kind of beside the point. But there was stuff that I remember being excited about at the time, you know, and it's so like Renegade Ops was like a twin stick shooter that came out on PlayStation 3. I think it was made by Avalanche. And like that was a good game. Like that was like a $10 game that I was happy to buy. Swarm was like another one where it was kind of like a sort of two dimensional Pikmin game. And like, that was like, that was a great way to spend, you know, like a Friday night in college. I remember not going out one night just so I could, you know, have some beers and just mess around with that. And so there's no reason why Sony can't sort of like put ceremony into smaller experiences. They absolutely can. And like, I understand they want everything to just be like a grand slam home run. Like I appreciate that. But at the same time, it's like, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, I think you guys are kind of missing the plot a little bit. Like, a game doesn't have to be groundbreaking for it to be good. You know, like, I don't know, like Tetris 99 was right. like a huge experience and like, come on, like you can't tell me it took hundreds of developers years to make that game, you know, <laughs> but like, I don't know. Nintendo is smart enough to lock that up. I, uh, <laughs> you know, like, come on guys. Play, I've play seen smarter, many not, people not harder. say that this era of Sony, I've seen many people say that this era of Sony is much scarier than the PS3 era of Sony because in the PS3 era, they were so desperate that they were experimenting. They were making crazy cool games like uh, Starfield? Star Starhawk. 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 You had massive yeah, action Starhawk. game, 256 Man. players online. Yeah. yeah. They were doing all kinds of cool stuff, man. And now it's like they are not they're just focusing on these triple a big games and expecting you and to be honest it's not a bad strategy expecting you to buy this game for these this console for the exclusives because that's what they've done for a long time but they didn't realize i think that like they also had all these smaller exclusives coming that people were super passionate about and, and, and in love with man listen i don't I don't see a reason to buy a PS5 this year at all. Like I like if you have a PS4 right now, you're really not missing much of anything. I played Miles Morales on my PS4, it ran fine. I had no problem with it other than, you know, it not living up to the hype, but uh, all right. That's that that's a matter of opinion as as opposed to just like a matter of like, oh, it, it can run on PlayStation 4. Like okay, that that's good to know. Your crappy take on, on a great game is not of uh, import right now. Um, I, I completely agree. And uh, PlayStation 4 was, and PlayStation 3, that was where I played all my third-party games, and it was just simply because mm -hmm. I liked the hardware more of the PlayStation 3. I liked it aesthetically more. I liked the UI. I liked the cross-media bar way more than anything on Xbox. And honestly, I just liked the right. hardware, you know? And so the ecosystem of the PlayStation Network, the sales that were constantly going on, the PlayStation Plus, like we get games of the gold now, we have Game Pass now, but like that all started with PlayStation Plus, and I was, you know, I got, I grabbed that before I ever had Xbox Live, and I had an Xbox 360 since 2007, you know, but that was the first online service I ever paid for was PlayStation Plus. Like it was just doing so many things right, and you're totally right, it's because they were behind and they had to innovate, and that's what Xbox is doing now. Like I think games of the gold, I don't care about my Xbox nearly as much as I care about my PlayStation, not just because I have like a PlayStation five and only an Xbox one, but it's like, man, if this service were available on PlayStation, I'd be so happy. 
you know, but it's just the fact that it's on Xbox that it leaves me a little, yeah, a, a little empty about it, you know. And I think Elijah feels the exact same way. Um, where if it were on PlayStation, he'd, he would, yeah, love, no, he, I, he would I, love it, you know, but it's not, so he doesn't. Yeah. And yeah. I would definitely put good people in position and just brainstorm one night and figure out, okay, what did we do differently? In uh, 2013, 2014, when they were starting to, when when was the uh, PS4 launch? Was it 13 or 14? It was 13. 13. Right. Well, really 14. It was right. December of 13 or yeah. whatever. So what what did we do then throughout that whole life cycle just to, because remember, PlayStation didn't have their big titles yet, but they were just kicking the pants off of Microsoft because everybody was buying the third party or the, you know, the, the multi-platform games on the PS4, for instance, battlefront, the first battlefront. Remember that game sold a gazillion units on the PS4, you know, it was, every- it was all the marketing, you know, like, right. If you think about the marketing going into that generation, Sony's PS4 reveal event was legendary. They were like, here's, 50 games. They're coming out in the launch window and they're all exclusive or whatever it was. Half those games didn't come out. Not a problem. Who, who cares back then? You know? Yeah. And then and I, we, we, we go to E3 and they're, and we, everyone I think walked out of that E3 being like, Oh, Sony is for bringing real. the fight yeah. to yeah. Microsoft, you know? And I would just make sure you'd have, like you said, Seth, you have to communicate, you know, Talk to them about why it's been so difficult to get in uh, PS5s into the hands of the gamers and what they're going to do to fight the, uh, you know, the, um, the, the scalpers, you know, because that has been the biggest, you know, the, the, that's been the dark cloud of the beginning of this generation mm-hmm. is the damn scalpers, you know, using the bots. What are you going to do? Come up with a plan so that you don't have to just get it by luck. Like there'll be a chance that you can get it. Yeah. You know, you've got to address it and you've got to talk about it because, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's frustrating. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's hard to say like if it's scalpers, specifically or if it's scalpers just in the era of covid like i'm willing to give them a pass on that just because the amount of online ordering being done is unprecedented compared to where it was even two years ago you know so like even then i'm willing to give them a slight pass i think they should probably have better systems in place but like also i don't know if it's their fault or if it's target's fault you know like it seems like the the playstation 5 q that they do directly seems to work pretty well but it's inconsistent you know uh but it seems like you know, it's like the, the the distributors where like that sort of falls apart. Um, but you're totally right. Like, it's one of those things. Honestly, if you're listening to this right now and you can't get a PlayStation 5 and you're desperately trying to get one, unless you have like a launch PS4, I can't recommend going hard after one. Like, I turned my PlayStation 5 on for the first time in two weeks the other day to download a PlayStation 4 game. And that was Star Wars Republic Commando. That was the only time I've turned it on in half a month. There's just nothing exciting there and if there is a bunch of playstation 4 games you missed uh that have been improved on playstation 5 and like i said you're still running a launch playstation 4 which i was like that is exciting but at the same time it's like ah those will still be there later you know so i i mean i i can't right. recommend anyone rushes Absolutely. out to buy a playstation 5 right now especially since you can only get them in a bundle and it's like man this this might be worth 500 dollars. i don't know if it's worth 750 to get like an extra controller and a year of PlayStation Plus and a GameStop gift card, you know? Yeah, man, it's um dark days as a PlayStation gamer. Dark days for sure. What Honestly, saying, George? Yeah, this is like a dumb thing, but I've been spending a lot of time with Apple Arcade lately. And I really like Apple Arcade. Uh, it had like a stealth drop of like 30 games in the past two weeks. And there's some really interesting stuff that dropped out. I've mostly been using it for puzzle games. Uh, which I don't normally play, but for some reason just feel right at home on a phone. I think it's just because I'm used to doing so much reading and texting on there that I like the word games that I'm able to play through Apple Arcade. But there was also uh, 
Fantasian, which was like a big JRPG from, uh, you know, some head honchos from the Final Fantasy franchise that came together to work on that game. And again, I know beating a dead horse, but I'm just suck, such a sucker for history and preservation and uh, like legacy, I guess, when it comes to video games, especially. Um, man, why not just release a PlayStation 1 emulator on, on iPhone and Android, you know, and just like let people pair a controller and just play it like that or you mean that you mean an official one because there yeah. is iphone yeah yeah sorry an, an official one like make playstation one games available on phone like i think playstation one games are both nostalgic and deep enough to compete with uh apple arcade offerings and especially able to compete with just sort of like run-of-the-mill um app store offerings like all the final fantasy games are available on iphone for like i don't know between like 14 and like 18 dollars like uh, I would much rather just pay six bucks for you know or ten bucks for like the PlayStation One version of that game and just have like even basic mm-hmm. touch controls implemented over them. But it's just I don't understand how they can just give up on so much history. Like that that's what really bums me out. And the the irony of them giving up on history is like they're also giving up on their own successes. And I think they're in desperate need of of yep. success stories right now, which they just don't seem particularly interested in doing. Absolutely. But you remember they're they all they're notorious for doing that. I mean, look at their handhelds. Besides Vita did or the um, PSP did good, but Vita they didn't really support. No, the PS TV they didn't really support VR at, at PS VR at first. I mean, it was like there wasn't anything that grabbed me to to get it. I know Elijah uh, and Austin both got it at the beginning, and then Austin ended up selling his, but. I don't know. I just I got it and I, I really liked it, but then I played an Oculus and like that technology is just so much better. That's why I was like surprised but heartened right. to see like the updated PlayStation VR controllers. Like those were they look like Oculus tech, but obviously gonna be like a little newer just in terms of development uh life uh lifeline, like lifetime when when it comes out. But I'm really like, oh, so like this wasn't an immediate overnight success, but you haven't given up on this yet. Like, oh crap like you're actually sticking your guns on something that's really nice to see yeah and it, it, it's weird because man it just seems like sony views the vita as this monumental failure and they just want to erase it as hard and as fast as possible for, off the record like let's pretend vita never existed right yeah but they had something there that if they had just pushed a little bit more would have really caught on man i mean you look at the vita community and like the diehards people really ride or die for the vita and you know i to be perfectly honest i wasn't one of them i got a v i got two vitas i ended up selling them both of them barely played anything on the vita right but i from an outside perspective i can see and respect that vita community and be like dude if they had spread just a little bit more if that if that thing had caught fire just a little bit more it was it would have been everywhere you know, but the 3DS happened to just drop the price right before the Vita came out, and then it was it just happened. They did it on purpose, and people bought that instead. And Sony just gave up the fight immediately at that point. They were like, "All right, well, we're not going to agree on any more projects. We're just going to let this thing die in the wild." And it was just like, man, you guys couldn't support it even just a little bit. You couldn't put up a little bit of a fight. Yeah, they, they just they, they 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 gave their backs. They rolled over, and you know that was it. And it, it, it's really hard to see, man. And I'm telling you what, I am just at the end of my rope with Sony right now. I just don't know. I just don't know how much, like how much longer can we justify just going like, Oh, that's such a Sony thing to do. You know, like there's no reason they couldn't have gotten us to be able to change our names before last year. And there's no reason that the stores need to be shut down. There's no reason that a single outage should put Sony down for, what was it? Four months that the PlayStation Network for four months, and you know just like the, the countless other things that build up and over and up, and it's just like, man, at what point can you stop justifying their actions? Because they they act like this is their first year when anything goes wrong ever. Yeah, and it they like, do you guys remember how bad the PlayStation Store works on PS4? Half the time you have to do a network test to get the PS4 to connect to the store. And you have you have like a forty five second window to get that thing done. You, you do the network test. You have to go right to the store to get it to, to, to connect. Why? 
You know, it's like it was just it was just one of those things where like, oh, you know, that's so Sony. They never fixed it. Anyway, the, the console came out 2013. My favorite is when I'm like browsing through, they always have like 10,000 games on sale and I'm browsing through a sale and I'm like, what is this game? Because like the title doesn't fit in the box. That, mm-hmm. That's one problem. But then like you, you press enter to like read the title and you're like, oh, that's not what I thought it was. And you press circle to go back. And instead of like leaving you where you were while you were searching through all these games, it just brings you back up to the yep. top and you're like, well, I was like a third through all these 10,000 games you got on sale. I guess I'm right. done now because I don't want to like relook yeah. through everything I just perused. All right, like I'll come back to this later. Um, and don't forget the countless times where someone got their um, information hacked. Yeah. Yep. Some people bought stuff using their card and then Sony would threaten to, to ban them if they tried to get their money back from the bank. Yep. You know, for the like if someone yep. spent three hundred dollars on your account, Sony's not gonna do anything to help you, but you can't go to your bank and get and, and report it stolen and get that money bank because or back because Sony's gonna uh Sony gonna has ban. a no refund policy. They have a r- policy that says we do not give refunds. And we're just like uh, you know, yeah, it's such it's, a Sony thing. Well, it yeah, sucks because no, Moss was on sale, and then like four days later, they just gave it away for free. Like, or they yeah. announced that they were going to give it away for free. I'm like, oh, well, can I get my 15 bucks back? And they're like, no. I'm like, all right, yeah, that sucks, dude. Um, I bought, I bought, I think it was DC versus Mortal Kombat. Yeah, and it was on sale. This is way back in the day. It was on sale, but I bought it just as the sale was ending. Right, so I bought it. The sale ended and I wasn't paying attention. I got charged the full price and I called Sony. I was like, hey, can like can I get a refund on this? And I was like, she's like, did you play it? Well, no, I didn't play it. I just bought it. And she's like, no, we're not giving you a refund. I was like, okay. And she's like, if you call your bank and get the money refund, she actually told me they would they would ban my account if I went and got you know, and I was like, come on, man, like this sucks. But we put up with this kind of stuff for so long. And dude, I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm making this prediction right now. Microsoft is lining up. They are buying studios. They are building up their power and they are building an attack strategy to Sony. And Sony is just off somewhere messing around right they are not preparing for yeah. my no time. man they're, they're, they're sipping margaritas by the pool and they don't yes. know it's like gun being put to the back of their head like yeah yes dude. It, 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 but it's worse than that microsoft is literally building like these armies of the studios they're just buying people left and right they just bought bethesda they might as well just buy like a chief of war staff right and they're like <laughs> we're bringing the fight to you and sony's like yeah, but we have God of War, so like, what are you really gonna do? You know, that's that's pretty much the exact thing that's gonna happen. I'm telling you guys, Microsoft is gonna run over Sony like a train this generation, and it's, it's gonna take Sony a solid five years to get this stuff together, like they did in PS3. Well, wait for that first first Bethesda game to come out on yep. on the Xbox, uh, you know, specifically to that, and then it'll be it'll be something else. It's going to be a bloodbath. But dude, Microsoft needs one press I conference. Think, I don't think Bethesda's that good, but whatever. Yeah. I don't I don't um, think they are either, but you but can't they sell games. They sell. Yeah, they yeah, sell, they sell yeah. games. No, that's true. It's going to take that, Microsoft that's, one that's press conference. True. One press conference to show up and be like, here's 25 exclusive games. Boom. Yep. And then sure. walk off stage. Like, like I mean, come on, dude. You know, like Microsoft is just buying studios left and right. They're buying RPG studios. They know where they need to hit Sony hard, and they are gonna go for it, man. They bought Obsidian and Bethesda. The team is back together, like because of Microsoft. It's like, come on. Also, man, Sony's just over here, just be like, we're gonna shut the servers down and make more people mad because whatever, who cares? Also, <laughs> one one thing I want to bring up, just because I feel like I've been overtly down on Sony. Um Sony's backwards compatibility on PlayStation 3, PSP, Vita, like that that stuff's like second to none. Like that library is yeah. absolutely incredible. And I know Xbox absolutely. has a huge selection of Xbox 360 games which are sort of beholden to third parties. You know, like Skate 3 is available because it's like through EA Play, not necessarily because like they want to put their old games they were trying to like improve their own service, you know, stuff like that. The amount of original mm-hmm. Xbox games offered on Xbox One, I don't think is very good. Like, I think they've got a lot of the important games, but like, I 
compared to what Sony's doing with like even PlayStation 2 games on PlayStation 3 that aren't available on PlayStation 4 and original PlayStation games especially, they're just doing laps on Microsoft in that regard. And so like I'm dunking on Sony for them making this decision. I don't think Microsoft is like they're doing better, but like I don't think they're doing anything like remarkable. You know, they're just not denying fans. But why can't this, Sony bring that avenue. to PS5, you know? Exactly. Yes. And so like you're really like for all intents and purposes, I understand that PlayStation 3 was a nightmare to develop for. They made a decision. It turned out to be wrong. It was difficult to develop for. I appreciate that. I get that. But you're telling me that in 2020, when you release this console, it's not possible for you to emulate PlayStation 1 games on it. Like, you're just not even going to try. Like, you're not going to carry those licenses, which I'm sure There's were a no nightmare way. to get in the first place. You're just going to let those lapse and just lose so much history you know i refuse to believe it playstation 3 i guess i understand to a certain extent and that was what playstation now is supposed to be the problem is people can't like people can't catch up with where playstation now needs you to be i had really good internet in san francisco i had my playstation 4 hardwired in even then i had i had like 500 megabytes down per second even then i still had like drops and blips in playstation now i think it's a great service but I also like I'm in Maine now. I do not have that. I've got like maybe 45 down, which is why I sound so choppy and slightly out of sync with everyone else I'm recording a podcast with. Like I can't even podcast normally <laughs> here, you know, it's like but how we love you, buddy. to play PlayStation now. <laughs> but it's just like you're telling me that you can't figure out a way to run Persona 2 on your PlayStation 5. Get the hell out of here, Sony. I know for a fact you absolutely can. Do better. You know, like try it just a little bit right. more. Just try a little harder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, you're absolutely right. And the the crazy thing to me is that I, don't know, I guess I'm I'm 27 now. 15 Gross. years ago, there was a working nearly perfect PS1 emulator I, on my PC. 10 years ago, there was a working nearly perfect PS2 emulator on my PC. And now there is a working not perfect, but it's getting way better emulator uh, for PS3 on PC made by people that did not work on the consoles. And you're telling me that Sony, PlayStation, one of the leaders of technology in the world, the owners and creators of this technology cannot create a PS1 emulator and put it on the PS5 or PS4. They can't do it for PS2, PS1, or PS3. They cannot put it that on their new consoles. Out of their mind, they're choosing not to do it because they don't think it's worth the resources. And they're wrong, man. I mean, I would love to be able to play Grandia or Xenogears on my PS4. I would love that. That would be amazing, but you just can't do it. Instead, I have to Ill- either illegally emulate it on my PC <laughs> illegally. or yeah, illegally, or <laughs> hope to God that it's, it's available in perpetuity on my Vita TV. That's all I can do. That's all I can hope for. Or, I mean, maybe I have the original disc and I have, a VGA to HDMI converter somewhere to plug in an original PS one to my TV. Cause I want to play this old game. And it's like, man, you have to find a solution. It's only tolerable for so long. And I think Microsoft realizes it. They see the future. They know what people want. And I think Microsoft is going to absolutely dunk on Sony. Like Kobe Bryant did. Was Just Kobe like Bryant Kobe dunker? Bryant dumped yes. on, dunked on Sony, yeah. Did was Kobe Bryant a dunker? Was he a oh, famous dunker? Yeah, yeah he was, okay, so he's, he was pretty like good at dunk. Dunking yeah. like Kobe Bryant, or you can throwing say, touchdowns like Tom Brady, or uh, Sorry, you man. know appeal appeal to coach to say Duncan like Tim Duncan, um, Duncan like Tim Duncan. They're gonna throw a knockout blow like Mike Tyson. How about that? It's good. It's a little, I mean, little old for this podcast, but yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. So Sony will get back up and probably towards the end of the generation. And they'll have a great next generation, just like they did with the PS4. But they are going to get smacked up, and Jim <laughs> Ryan is going to be out of office. And it's really, it, it's two funny. and a half I years. I don't know. Like, do you follow baseball? No, coach. Do you follow baseball? Yes. All right. You know how like the team that wins the World Series usually sucks the year after winning the World Series, and it's because right. they made everyone throw their arms out for like you know all of October and September. And they're just like, well, screw it. Like, we're doing this to win the championship. Like, I don't care. Oh, you're a starter. And you just pitched two days ago. You're our best pitcher. Get in the game, Chris Sale. You know, just stuff like that. 
it, it's kind of like you no know, one. It's impossible to win two generations in a row. Like no one can do it because like they had to pull out all the stops to win the previous generation. And they're like, dude, we just blew our entire wad last time. Like, can we just like coast, rest on our laurels just a little bit, and then like I, I need to take like a quick little power nap, and then I'll be back. Like it's just impossible for a, a company but- to like maintain that kind of momentum for more than five, six years. But Sony didn't do a lot during the PS4, during that generation. They just produced a video game system that was not for TV. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they, like what Microsoft did. They, they messed up because they tried to create this big entertainment ecosystem with the Xbox One. But Sony, they, they came out with a gaming console. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right about that, Coach. You bring a really fascinating point, which is, did Sony really win last generation or did Microsoft screw Lose. themselves yeah. so hard out of the gate that they were never able to catch up? You know, that's really an interesting question because if you think about it, what did Sony do great last generation besides make great, amazing exclusive games, which they, they've always done, to yeah. be fair, you know, but they really pushed the envelope, I think, with their exclusive games last generation. But other than that, the console still doesn't work, right? You yeah, it's, it's funny you say that because I'm writing an article for a website called App Trigger, and my my title of this is PlayStation Four Enjoyed All the Success PlayStation Three Deserved, and it's because PlayStation yeah. Three just got super weird with all of its stuff, but no one cared because it stumbled at the gate, and then they just sort of like took that energy. I think it was really present at the beginning of the PlayStation Four lifestyle, but then like yeah, by the end it just kind of like faded out. And it was just like it was like a movie theater that just like stopped showing weird indie stuff, you know, like it was only like uh, we're like it was kind of like the, the marvelization, I guess, of video games where like everything felt kind of samey and like homogenized. But because of that, it's just like oh, yeah. it's all super high quality, but it's like all super high quality in very similar ways. And there's just not enough variation to like keep me interested. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, that, that's a that's a really interesting point. And. I don't know, man. All I'm saying is Sony better be prepared because I think Microsoft is coming. Dude, Microsoft comes out and they're like, the Elder Scrolls 6, here it is, Xbox exclusive. You know, here's the next Fallout game, Xbox exclusive. And Sony is in trouble, man. I mean, they are in serious trouble. So, I don't know. We're going to have to sit and wait this one out and see. Because I don't think when it comes down to it, you know, God of War and Last of Us are amazing. I think they're pushing the Naughty Dog syndrome on me a little too hard. Admittedly, I do not like Naughty Dog games. I came to that realization a few months ago, like we had discussed. Um, but I think I think Sony's in a world of hurt, man. And I think they need to, to take a step back, get Jim Ryan out of there. He's made nothing but bad moves and put someone who likes and respects his community back. And I, I think they're going to find a lot more success that way. It makes you hey. The president or the CEO, you know, get him in there. Well, it, PS4, it was all of those, the, the mid tier and, and indie developers that made that system. Right. You know, I mean, just remember every time there was a E3, there was just all these amazing games that were announced, right? Yeah. Like, it was yep. just, it was something else. Microsoft still did their thing, but it wasn't. Yeah. Like I just what remember Sony was doing. I just remember for like five years straight, Microsoft would always go first, right? And you were like, "Dude, that was a press conference. That's going to be hard to top." And then Sony would come out and just blow your mind. Yep. It's it's like they were all. It's like they sold their soul to the devil and were able to see the future because they just had one up on Microsoft every single year. Their marketing was on point. Their communication was on point. They were the people that announced the Final Fantasy VII remake at, on, on Microsoft's. Probably their strongest year, you know? I mean, they announced Final Final Fantasy VII Remake and immediately crushed that whole press conference. It was the most requested game for like 15 years. And they got it. And they got it exclusively. It's still not on PC or or Xbox. And they they said, it's coming. They had a they had an amazing E three press conference where they announced a Kickstarter at their E three like wasn't that like yeah right like Shenmue was like at E three yeah. yeah. twenty fifteen or whatever and it's like dude they that was the same year that Spider Man got announced <laughs> yeah and like they announced a game that like wasn't even done wasn't even paid for but like they were considered to have won just because like they brought back like a beloved thing that people missed out on 
Meanwhile, Shenmue yes. never came out on PlayStation 2, man. That came out on Xbox. <laughs> like, that was a Dreamcast and Xbox yeah. exclusive that Sony managed to, like, steal the uh, the third entry to. And it was, like, it's just like, oh, and it's a and it's a Kickstarter. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not real. It's not real yet. <laughs> yeah. It was, that was, that was maybe the weirdest press conference move I've seen ever. Yeah, but yeah, but still, like, they, yeah, man, it, Sony it felt like they won, which is count. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Sony just had their marketing down. They had a uh, direction. They had this community behind them and they, they were appealing to. And then somewhere along the lines, like two or three years ago, they just were like, all right, now we're in control and we're going to hit cruise control and just coast at 65, right? And Microsoft's like, yeah, we're a mile behind. Just snorting a line of coke off the the you know like the the dashboard and drink pounding a beer and they're like put it in high gear, bud. Who cares? Throw money at it. And so there's a see Microsoft come in the rearview mirror and about to to lap them. That's a, that's kind of how it's going. If Microsoft's just making all these crazy moves with the unlimited amount of money they have, just driving down the freeway, snorting coke off you know the, like I said the dashboard and drinking and. I don't know, man. It's it's going to be a really interesting next few years, and I'm really, really excited for it. So, all right. Anything you guys want to say before we wrap up this podcast? Um, yeah, I don't know Final Fantasy super well, but Seth is dumb. Final Fantasy 3 is great. I, uh, I never said it wasn't. I never said it wasn't. You said I was getting all the bad ones out of the way. Yes, you are getting all the bad ones out of the way. <laughs> In terms of Final Fantasy, dude, like if you look at like a list of the greatest Final Fantasy games, right? Three is at the bottom, thirty percent. Oh no, pretty good to me. But that does not mean it's a bad game. <laughs> I want to be clear: there's very few bad Final Fantasy games. Yeah, you're doing like the Pixar one. thing. You're like even the worst Pixar movie is still pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Bugs Life wasn't too good. I I wasn't a fan of Bugs Life. It was a remake of Seven Samurai. It was good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man. And play Final Fantasy IV next. Do you have Final Fantasy IV? I did. I grabbed the ultimate like PSP collection. Um, so I'm excited to check it out. Because there's a really there's a really good 3D remake of four on DS. Came out on DS and the phone and on PC as well. I so have that. Uh, it looks like butt on DS, and I can't play it. Like I just can't get into it because oh. I think the art style is so ugly. Um, well, they play the original one. Yeah, the yeah, original yeah. I, I grabbed the, the PSP one, which I think is like still like the sprite artwork. So I'm I'm really excited to check that one out. Um, I'm assuming you're trying to play through uh, like like a ton of Final Fantasy games. Uh, uh, when you get to seven, are you gonna play the remake or like the original one? The original one first. That's right. uh, That's but yeah, the do. the beta for fourteen just hit PlayStation Five, and it's apparently not as big of a file size as I thought it would be. So that might be what gets me back into playing my PlayStation Five. You let me know, bud. <laughs> you let me know, and we are in there. All right, I got you. I got you set up. All right, sounds good. I gave all my friends that joined a million gil immediately when they joined. I was like, "Here, have fun." Because <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you guys what I do real quick before we end the show. Let me tell you guys how I make money in Final Fantasy fourteen. All right, I'm such a scumbag. Here's what I do. I know exactly. I'll, I'll, I'll do some research on like what not the high level players are going to do because the high level players, they know exactly what they want and they, they do the same thing that I'm doing right now. Right. But I, I like focus on it for, I'll do this for a week. I'll make a ton of money and not worry about it for six months. I will look at like, let's say the mid level players need a whole bunch of copper to make gear or something like that. I'm going to invest and buy out the entire copper supply from the market board. And then I'm just going to control the market and I'm going to resell it at 10 times oh, the value. Wow. And then they're going to be forced to buy it. All right. They're, they, they're forced to give me 10 times my money. Simple economics, bud. All right. You're right. These You're new right. Players, you are a scumbag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these new players think they're getting copper for 10 gil. No, no, no. They're getting it for 500 gil a piece. All right. <laughs> Yep. I, I don't know that's if I want your I, your Final Fantasy fourteen blood money, Seth. I don't know if, that, if that's how uh, I want to make my way in the world. You want to be on my side, bud. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that about wraps it up this week for Frame Skip episode 52. Remember, if you have any questions to write in at Frame Skip Pod on Twitter and Instagram or Frame Skip Podcast at gmail.com. We do have an official frame skip question 
sheet at bit.ly slash frameskipq. That's bit.ly forward slash frameskipq. You can find us all on Twitter. I'm at Seth the 90s Kid. Don't follow me. Elijah is at Luca Lizardman. Austin is at Austin J. Eller. George is at GB Loftus. Coach is at Frame Skip Pod. And uh, any closing comments, boys, before we wrap it up? Yeah, suggest things for us to talk about because I feel like everyone's getting sick of us just talking about PlayStation. But also, but you know what, man? Like, if it's it's the big discussion in the industry right now. But, right? We're, this, but we're this angry, and we've been this angry for like a month. So, like, that's that should tell you how how badly Sony messed up. It's hard, man, because, like, first it was just the servers sh- getting shut down, right? And then it was, like, the Jason Schreier article and The Last of Us getting remade, and it's, like, it just keeps rolling. It just keeps rolling, man. It's like a snowman getting built. I feel like I'm in politics and, and like, the election again. And, like, it's almost, it, dude, it's, it's, it's so bad. It's, like, Microsoft is paying people off to get bad PR on Sony. <laughs> That's what it seems like. For me, the, you know? the weirdest thing, so, like, King Kong was made in the 30s, right? the first right. King Kong movie. And then it was remade again in the seventies. And then it was remade again in 2005. And so at this point, like we're never ever going to see footage of the last of us from PlayStation three ever again, you know, cause they remade it for PlayStation four and it sounds like they're remaking it for PlayStation five. So it's just like, think of a movie that's been remade two times and just like completely wipe off from relevance. Like the, the first time it was remade, you know, like or the original movie. Well, like, like the that's weird thing bizarre. is, is that, they remastered it. They remastered it on PS4, right? Yes. They just, they just up the frame rate and they gave some resolution. Apparently, they were remaking The Last of Us from the ground up. You know, they're 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 using like new resources and everything from the ground up. I'm like, The Last of Us looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> Screw that. Make make two new Jack games for the same price. Three three new Jack yeah. games for the same price. Yeah. It's a numbers game, man. Like, I would rather have more average games than fewer great games, I think. Absolutely. You know, it's like it's like the, well, Patri- like the Patriots in the NFL draft. Like, they always trade back. They always get more picks. I just want more picks. Like, I want more chances for right. something to really strike with me than just, like, putting all my hope into, like, three or four titles over the course of a generation. I agree. But until next time, guys. Enjoy. Thank you for enjoying the show. Bye.